Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on exploring this week's theme of Random Rumble where I asked my patrons just tell me whatever they wanted me to check out, no themes tying them together, and I randomly selected from that list. Today we're going to be looking at a collaboration between Synestia and Disembodied Tyrant. This is the closer track on their collaborative album. It's an EP, there's only four tracks on it, 20 minutes total, but it's still pretty cool that two bands came together and put an entire album together rather than one band just featuring another on a specific song. So we're going to check out Winter by Disembodied Tyrant and Synestia. This is going to be black metal, isn't it? I can feel it. Gorgeous opening, though. Great atmosphere on the harpsichord, I believe that is. Those short string hits, the choir. Oh! Oh! Huh? Triplet modulation came out of nowhere. Bringing it back. What is this?
<laughs> of course. We're still not done. Are you kidding me? Okay. This is, uh, well, this is a rarity. For me then isn't it we're not really going to discuss the music too much at least not in so far as the composition is concerned because they didn't write like 80 percent of this and it's really annoying me the whole time i was trying to think of the name of this song and i can't but it is a very popular classical track and they remixed it or what makes this interesting is in traditional music terms, we would say that they arranged it. We don't really talk about arrangement too much on this channel. In fact, I think the only time I've brought it up was in a hugely negative perspective on a Yeba track because I uh, was just not happy with the way that they arranged it. We listened to the studio version and then an acoustic live version and there were some cool elements but uh, I also was just I, I felt like there's a lot of stuff underutilized there anyways I put a link up there uh, you can check that out if you're interested Yeba is very much not metal but it was a very cool reaction nonetheless and it's one of only two times now that arrangement has popped up at all because for the most part we well, I say we, but, you know, on this channel, we look at songs that are original, written by the artist, performed by the artist. There's nothing that needs to be changed from the original version to something new. This changes that, though. This entire song is arranged, and there really isn't a lot to talk on here, but I think they did a fantastic job with it nonetheless. For the most part... A lot of it is just carried over one-to-one -one with new instrumentation. And while well, even the new instrumentation part is not consistent either, we do have the strings that show up in many of these sections that take the lead melody that I believe was already written for strings. Or maybe I've only heard arrangements for strings. It might have been a piano original too. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but we're... We're still utilizing an older sound, a non-metal sound, to represent the core motifs that we hear throughout this. But there are times when we take that and we put it on the electric guitar. We also have a momentum shift here too. This is quite a bit faster than the original. <laughs> Um, but I do like where they chose to add new ideas to the original song. There are a couple sections in what I think we could probably call a chorus, maybe, and we'll get into structure in a second, but we have these uh, longer held out ideas in the main motif. And underneath that, though, they'll put in 16th note picking. They'll put in really fast bass kicks. They'll put in, uh, you know, faster vocal lines. But then when the main motif has a moving idea to it, the band will actually play something slower. And there's, there's always this push and pull, this counterplay that's going on that certainly is present in the original form as well, but isn't as highlighted in the way that they have presented it here. Particularly also because I think that these sections are newly written to go along with the other parts, which is 100% part of an arranger's job. While the name itself indicates that you're taking pieces already there and putting them in new places, part of it is also writing new parts or combining parts. It's a way of 
Well, in a sense, you're trying to capture the spirit of the song, and that's going to include motif, uh, core melodies, chord progressions, these, these really integral elements of the characteristic of the song, but also embellishments might be removed or they might be added. There's a lot of, of deciding what needs to be kept and what needs to be added as an arranger's job. And... Um, yeah, we have some elements here where we are adding new drum parts, adding new um, guitar parts to complement what's act what's going on in the original motif. And I think that's really awesome. Now, a lot of this is for the metal aspect of it. We don't really add counterpoint to any of this. We don't change up the harmonic uh, element at all. It's mostly about, all right, this already sounds cool, but how do we make it sound intense? Where do we get that metal energy from? And so it's usually either about adding weight through a ton of attacks or adding weight through timbre, just the size, the booming size of these guitars. That's just within the elements that retain much of the original, though there is brand new sections throughout here and they're the breakdowns, the, the obviously metal parts that have very little classical tie-in to them. It's really interesting to see how they interweave this kind of stuff into the playing in a way that makes sense. I'm not going to say I enjoyed all of them. I'm not a real big fan of breakdowns to begin with, but I do think that they found a natural way to move between their ideas of these um, arranged versions of the original song and the purely unique metallic elements that they are adding in. The flow works really well and there's a strong sense of contrast between the more dynamic elements in the original, I mean in the arranged works and the more static elements in, in you know, the, the breakdowns. <laughs> um, and this whole element comes off really well. And what surprised me even more is that, you know, we've listened to metal songs and metal albums that start off with strings and choirs, and then you just never hear them again. And I kind of figured that well, that's what was going to happen here as well. We get the intro, and like I mentioned, I was like, there's something in my bones that tells me this is black metal, but luckily it wasn't. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I figured we were going to get this really cool, dynamic, sweeping, powerful intro and then we're just going to throw that aside for some traditional metal, wherever that took us. And no, they incorporated that into it. This was a smooth moving into the metallic sound rather than a, uh, a disparate introduction to a song where it might retain some of those feelings somehow, but for the most part, uh, just a distinct separation between the intro and the metal song. And we didn't get that here. Everything works well together, and uh, I just really appreciate that. Now, structure. This is not the original song in structure. This is a part where the arrangement comes in, and they chose specific core motifs that are very popular, very well known from the original, and stuck with them, reutilizing them over and over, and fitting them into something that feels like an A, B, A, B section. From there, we went into a breakdown, and then from here, the song just kind of, well, we resume back to the A, B, don't we? Or maybe just the B. We, we brought back one of the core ideas. And then we had like two back-to-back -back outro breakdowns. That was just wild. Every time I thought the song was over, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, so, but in general, we have a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, or maybe just a chorus. So return back to something we were at. And then our outro, which is a very standard uh, structure, a very modern standard structure that the original song was not necessarily written within. And so they r arranged that to fit into the modern standards. So I, uh, I enjoy that too. It's like I said, it's another key element in the arranger's uh, uh, task list. Trying to figure out how best to represent this original idea you have in whatever box you're trying to put it in today. And uh, like I said, I think the arranger did a fantastic job of this. Compositionally, structurally, pairing it all together, mixing it with the metal, and finding ways to introduce their own style to it. And uh, it ends up being something that works well in the end. 
aside from structure, though, we also have tempo. The tempo is very fast in this, but it's not just that. We're also playing things very fast. And there's quite a few drum sections that I just could not believe were played really. <laughs> um, do I still have this up? Yes. So I have the lineup of these two people, uh, these two groups on Metal Archives. And we have uh, one drummer here, but it doesn't say anything about, dang, this kid's young too. I don't know how old he is, but this picture looks about 19. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyways, where I was going, they have a drummer and it doesn't say anything about uh, drum machines, doesn't say anything about triggers. So I'm not going to assume there's any of that. This dude just has machine gun legs. On the on the bass kicks, uh, the blast beats that we get at times just absolutely bonkers, and all of those modulations too. Whenever we go from something that is uh, straightforward rhythmically, which is usually quarter notes or eighth notes, sixteenth notes, something rigid though, and we shift away from these even groupings of two, four, eight, sixteen, anything like that, into asymmetric ones like triplet beats we normally slow it down here though every time we went to a triplet feel we sped it up and that's just absolutely bonkers every single time i was like okay this song can't get any faster and they push it one level further it just continued to blow my mind with the speed and the intensity that comes from that on this track uh, production here is absolutely insane. Everything is clear and crisp. There is a dirty grittiness to it all, but that doesn't ruin any of my ability to hear anything. Um, but what I think I want to touch on last is just the vocal dexterity. According to Metal Archives, there are two vocalists on this, one from each band. And uh, yeah, having that duality in here I think works really well. We have some higher goblin-esque sounds, we have some mid-range stuff, we have some ultra-low growls, we have layering of all those as well, and uh, it all just comes together into something that feels like it's dynamic in the large run. At any given moment, the vocals are pretty static. You got the one sound. It's not like they were jumping around and, and having any sort of dexterity between all these different sounds, but from, you know a four bar phrase to the next, we might change vocal styles or vocalists entirely. And that allows the song to feel a bit more dynamic in that area, which I think works really well alongside the highly dynamic writing in here. It allows the entire song to feel alive. It never feels flat at all. There's always something in it that is changing, that's bouncing around, that's playing fast, that's altering its pitch or its tone or its timbre. It's, uh, it's just always moving, and that helps with the intensity of it as well. I never really noticed this before, but I think that might be something that I want to explore further as we check out you know, more metal bands, you know what we do on the channel, um, is listen to songs with the perspective of monotonous vocals being less intense. I don't know if that's a thing, but it is something I felt here, and that might not necessarily be something that is caused by the two. Having all these vocal sounds might not make it feel more intense. It could just be a correlation because the song is already super intense and dynamic. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to explore that on you know as we move forward and uh, see if that hypothesis rings true in other songs and try to see if it's mostly correlative or if there is some causation between that but i do think it works really well here the song is very high energy and the vocals add to that too i'm going to find some lyrics for this and then we are going to wrap it up all right so first of all vivaldi's four seasons suite this was uh winter which matches with the title of the song and it's mostly comprised of motifs that are explored throughout it, but focuses on the intensity of the first movement of winter, which I realized while re-listening to it, I don't think I've ever heard the second movement nor the ending. 
it's always just those core melodies that everybody knows. Uh, and they come from pretty much the very beginning of, what was it, like a 10 minute song? Mm, yeah, give or take, like eight, eight to 10 minutes, somewhere in there. Uh, and most people only know like the two melodies because they're the ones that get used everywhere. So I went and re-listened to the entire winter portion of the suite. I'll probably end up listening to the other three seasons later today <laughs> because uh, Vivaldi just has a fantastic way of crafting beauty out of motif. He might not be the best person who's ever done this in classical music, but it's so easy to hear the recurring idea throughout the entire work of art, but it always sounds fresh, and the whole song is just gorgeous. So, yeah, I mean, I highly recommend it. After you're done with this, you're like, oh, you know, what's Brian on about here? Go check out Antonio Vivaldi's Four Seasons, uh, the winter song. It's the fourth part. It's the final song in the suite. Listen, it's only like 8 to 10 minutes, right? Listen to the whole thing. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I highly recommend it. Lyrics, though. This is about a war. And I guess in a sense, the Earth is tired of this war. It doesn't necessarily tell how long it's been going on, but it does say that it is a... Uh, where was that? It was a war that had gone on for too long. An ageless plight. And so, Winter, the great harbinger, comes across and blankets the entire earth in a pale white sheet, smothering the field of the great war. It talks about a crimson snowfall suffocating fields of corpses. But now a world will be reborn and baptized, overwritten by the winter. It talks about, at the very end of the song, this cold, weary, old world will be engulfed in ice. That's, that's pretty much it right there. There's a lot of stuff to describe what the battlefields look like, how thick the ice, the, the snow is. Uh, you know, really dark descriptions of this, this ice will now be your tomb and stuff like that <laughs> being uh, really extra. But the main idea here is that the, the winter just doesn't end. It covers up all of the negativity that humans have brought to the planet. And uh, it, it begins Earth again, freezing all of us in a level of snow. That's, that's the song. It's very intensely written. The lyrics are, I think, well written too. They are a bit over the top and kind of campy, but it's done so with an eloquence that I can't deny. It's not the brute force sort of blunt metallic writing that you would hear in in your uh, you know your average death metal group. There is actually a really strong grasp of the English language and a wide vocabulary on display here. And while it still is quite surface level and occasionally uh, graphically done in a way possibly to uh, shock somebody, uh, there, like I said, there is an eloquence here, a, a disgusting eloquence, but one nonetheless that I think works really well when paired with the disgusting eloquence of the music, the gnarly, gritty guitar tones paired with the beauty of Vivaldi's writing. And of course, the choir and the strings there as well, elevating the song and its feel. So, I mean, it all comes together really well, I think, And it all ties together well, too. I think the music absolutely captures a lot of the lyrical themes going on here, at least in the way that the lyrics are described. I can't really say that there's any part of the song that makes me think of an earth frozen over by an eternal winter, but uh, it does capture the intensity of such an event rather well. All right, those are my thoughts on Disembodied Tyrants and Senestia's Winter. What do you think of this track? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives you want to add to the conversation. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. 
Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, we do have a special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. EST, 9 p.m. UTC. Yep. I don't usually say EST, and that really messed me up. Usually I say 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then 9 p.m. UTC. Uh, and that, like, the flow. There's so much muscle memory in this intro. And if I screw something up, I have to think about what I'm doing. And <laughs> Oh, geez. Anyways, uh, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.